Hey, John here. Uh, the other day I was shooting video with my cell phone. This is an LG G6 phone. And I, uh, you know, if you want to handhold it, then great. Uh, but, you know, if you don't have a selfie stick or you need a tripod, you might need an adapter like this, okay? So let's first look at my tripod. I got this thing. This is a, what is that? Zomi or Zome? Zomai? I don't know. Uh, whatever this is, this is a Z818 type of uh, tripod. Now, the way this thing works is you've got this snap, uh, like uh, it unscrews and the headpiece comes off, right? So this, if you look closely, I don't know how well I can get that in the light glare just right. You can see there's like a trapezoid in there that mounts inside this clamp, right? And I measured it and I 3D printed uh, a bracket to match. So this thing fits inside like so. And you tighten it up like this. You don't have to get it very tight at all. Like I swear to God, there's like two or three ounces of pressure on there and it's in there. It's not going anywhere. And of course you can stick your phone in. And now I got my phone on a tripod. Now this particular one doesn't hold on to the phone. It will fall out. So don't, you know, run around with your, 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 your tripod and run around with it and let it fall out. If you wanted to change that, you could obviously extend these up and bring them in. If you wanted to 3D print one of your own, I'll put links to a GitHub page with this bracket in it with the SCAD files and uh, an STL if you just so happen to have one that has the same dimensions as my phone. And you have a Zome uh, tripod. Now, uh, I also have run into occasion where I wanted to also do the same sort of thing with this old Hero 2 GoPro camera. This has seen a lot of wear, a lot of little yuck on there. So, sorry for that. This has been used for long-term time-lapse photography, okay? Now, if you do that with a GoPro, you run the battery will run out you know certainly in just a couple of hours so you need this thing continuously plugged into something like usb power i've shoot for a week or longer with this thing and uh it works great <laughs> as long as you keep it plugged into the power all right so thus is this thing now if you, you it comes with like a clamshell the waterproof clamshell tripod mount you can do that and you can cut the side of it out if you wanted to nowadays you could probably buy replacements of those for dirt cheap on uh, eBay or something if you you wanted to go that route. Otherwise, if you want to, you know, I don't know, what is this, a dollar or maybe 50 cents worth of filament, just print one of these things. It has like a, a spring-loaded retaining clip there, pops in here, and this one is not going to come out. So you can just put it on your tripod and mount it in there and shoot to your heart's content. And, of course, you have access to the... Uh, power and a mic if you want to put on a headset or something on when you're uh, shooting with this thing. I use this in my shop from time to time when I want the wide angle lens. Uh, I suppose that the new Pi high quality wide angle lens, new, relatively newer, uh, is uh, probably adequate for my needs these days. But uh, I, you know, even so, you know, you buy a high quality lens, you buy the high quality camera, and you buy a Pi and the power supply and all that junk. You're into it maybe a hundred bucks. I suspect you could get a Hero 2 a lot cheaper than that <laughs> if all you wanted to do was record a little bit of wide angle video onto an SD card. So this is the tripod I bought mine. I think I might have actually bought it on Amazon or something. So when you fold it all up it's 18 inches tall like this i'll put a link to this uh for reference on the in the description below the video on on youtube of the tripod that i have that i made the mounts for it's the z818 tripod now right now this thing seems to be currently unavailable maybe it's stuck on a ship in the suez canal i don't know it also might be that they have a newer version of a tripod that came out here. This looks like it's really similar, but it collapses down to 14 and a half inches instead of the 18, which would have been nice when you take this on an expedition uh, to not have it use up so much space. So maybe this is the way to go. I think this is a little ex expensive than I paid for mine when I bought it, by the way. Uh, and if you surf around, you might see other ones as well. Look closely at how these tripods are made. You see these, like, rounded uh, locks that are on here? You kind of grab them with your hand, and you twist them around, and they, and they squeeze down on the legs when you telescope them, all right? If you look at some other brands, they have these kind of, like, flip lever locks 
Uh, I only mention this because I've had this thing in 45 below zero air, and this tripod survives. The ones that have the plastic flip locks tend to freeze and explode <laughs> in that kind of temperature. So if you're in an extreme cold uh, air, this tripod does survive well. Uh, I had one, and a friend of mine who's a videographer also has one of these. He's the one that turned me on to the particular make and model, which is this one here, that he and I both had last time I was out in that kind of environment. Now, if you want to tinker around with this and try to build your own uh, phone mount type of thing, this is the uh, the rendering in Open SCAD of the bracket I just showed you. You'll notice that I designed the 3D uh, support material into the uh, design itself. You can comment that out if you want. Uh, for whatever reason, my slicer was putting a lot of junk in this area here that drove me nuts. I didn't want that. This actually turns out to be printed and pop off very nicely. I print mine with PETG, which tends to be very sticky kind of filament. Uh, this doesn't just want to snap apart because it has a little bit of a flex to it, which helps enormously with uh, strength, right? A little bit of flexibility adds a lot to strength, right? You don't want it brittle because it'll just snap really easy, especially if you're in cold air, right? Uh, let's go ahead and look at the code real quick. What do we got? View here, blah, blah, blah. Turn on the editor. At the top here, you got your X, Y, and Z dimensions of your phone, right? I got a 157 by 13 by 80. So if you hold your phone in a portrait orientation, the 157 is the height, 80 is the width, and the Y here is the thickness of the phone. Now, I included the protector case because I don't want to have to take it out of the protector case every time I put it in the, in, the, in the clip. So you can just change these to whatever your phone is, render it away, and print one. Everything else should then uh, scale uh, appropriately, all right? So let, let's say your phone is super thick, right? You have a 23 millimeter thick phone. You can see a super fat one, right? And you can see the support moves along with it and stuff like that, which is, uh, you know, whatever, that's, that's, that's handy. Or, you know, not, <laughs> depending on what you want to do. If you don't want the supports, by the way, that's right here. Just comment that out and they go away. And then your slicer would generate the support that it would normally put on there. Now here's the uh, the model for the uh, uh, con uh, the retainer clip thingy for the GoPro. This is a Hero 2. This little notch down here is so that you can put a, a little head headphone jack in the in the mic input on the side of the GoPro camera, right? So there you can see the trapezoid again that goes inside the tripod. And you can see this little retaining clip thingy here. There's like a little finger on the top. Let me see if we can get a good view of that. There you go. You can see it kind of reaching out. This thing snaps, it bends back and then snaps back in on top and holds the GoPro in there so it doesn't come sliding out. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could put something like that on the uh, telephone holder as well, but you'd have to be make sure that you put a nice big hole there so that your camera can see out the back if, of course, you want to use the rear-facing camera, right? So if you find these things useful, let me know in the comments below. I'm always interested to find out what other people do, what other kind of creative little doodads they make in order to save themselves from having to buy a several hundred dollar or a thousand dollar camera just to shoot some stuff in their, in their basement uh, lab, right? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.